Hey folks, uh, this video is going to be about uh, Grafana Loki. Grafana Loki is an aggregated logging solution and in this video you will learn how to do basic queries, how to do log based metrics, so basically counting the log lines, and third you are going to make an alert based on those um, counted log lines, so if you get too many errors or too much activity you will get an alert based on that. So let's get started. So uh, I have this Grafana installation and just to verify that I have a working Loki connection under data sources I pick Loki and I push the test button. It came back green so Loki is good to go. So when you first start out with Loki I recommend you that you go to the explore view in Grafana and pick Loki as data source so you could start constructing your queries. Now with every logging solution there is a catch, there is a query language and learning query languages is not the strong side of anyone uh, therefore Grafana Explore View has a little wizard that helps you to construct those queries and we are going to use this wizard for the first time and then I'm going to talk just uh, about the basic structure of these queries. So first of all uh, in step one you can pick a bunch of uh, labels, Kubernetes labels, and uh, based on these labels you will set uh, a, a, a set of label selectors and you can pick basically a log stream. So there is not much in my cluster, so but it's a GitOps cluster, so I'm just going to pick the flux system namespace and in the app labels I am picking source controller. These two selected me uh, a log stream and if I click show logs then uh, the logs from uh, the flux system namespace pods which are labeled with app equals source controller are showing up in this view. On the top there is the volume of the logs and in the bottom you can see the actual logs so no need to do kubectl logs anymore. Um, if you are familiar with GitOps this source controller component basically goes out to GitHub polls every I think for me it's 15 seconds and uh, checks if there is a change in GitHub and if there is it will apply on the cluster. So in this view what you, you see are actually these heartbeats that uh, it goes out, uh, goes, goes to my GitOps production apps and GitOps production infra repositories and just checks for changes. So that's basically uh, 8 logs per minute, 8 log entries per minute and in the top you can see this roughly averaging at 8 logs per minute. So cool, um, this is actually the first part of how to do queries uh, with uh, Loki. Uh, first you have to select a stream. This is very similar uh, to Prometheus labels. If you are familiar with that one you can assume that uh, th the way you do label selectors in Prometheus works quite similar in Loki. Now what else can we do with these uh, selected log streams? Well. Um, you can pipe them, you can pipe them into different further filters. So for example if I go and pipe it into this regular expression uh, where I'm wildcard select selecting something from this filter, for example uh, GitOps production infra, then I will see only the uh, log entries for this particular uh, git source. And as you can see this is half of my log traffic so we really narrowed it down further. So cool, uh, basically this is the basic structure of queries in Grafana Loki. First you select the stream and then you pipe them through a series of selectors. Uh, if you go to the Grafana LogQL uh, documentation page you can find uh, various other options for, for the query language. Uh, we also summarized it at Gimlet. Uh, we have an ebook on uh, building a, basically a developer platform, basically summarizing the things that I, I just told you. Querying basics, you first pick a log stream, you then pipe it into various further filters. You, can, you have seen how to do a, a regular expression based filter, but you can do direct, direct matching or uh, filtering things out. Cool. If you have 
uh, installed Grafana Loki with a Gimlet stack uh, through, the, through the, the Gimlet dashboard, then you will have this dashboard available. It's basically similar to the Explore view, uh, but if you are not familiar with the uh, Loki querying syntax, it makes it one step more convenient than the uh, uh, the Explore view. So basically, this is my Flux system namespace, and if I type here uh, just this random string, uh, just on my previous filter, then you can see uh, it filtered down. Let's stick to this uh, dashboard just a little more because uh, by looking at the queries in this uh, dashboard uh, you can further familiarize yourself or just confirm the knowledge that you have already about the Loki uh, querying language. As you can see in this dashboard what I did is that I did a variable based uh, stream selector then I piped it through uh, regex based wildcard query and there was a possibility to enter row queries so I just uh, concat that those uh, querying filters at the end of the of the, the um, query so this was how to uh, do the querying part and the other interesting part about low-key queries is that just like in Prometheus you can apply a rate function on selected uh, log streams so if I use the rate function uh, with a five minute look back then I can get uh, a per, per five minute uh, average um, log uh, entry count. If I change this to one minute, then the, the granularity of this uh, chart changes, changes slightly. So this is about counting log lines. And with uh, Grafana, there is one very cool thing, is that you can set alerts. Basically, what you can chart on a panel or on a dashboard, you can set alerts for. So building a dashboard from scratch and then create a panel on that, uh, counting log lines, and at the end, I'm going to set an alert on that uh, value. So if I start editing this uh, panel, I'm just going to call it flux source controller activity and um, pick the data source to be Loki and I'm going to replicate the query that, that we created before the namespace is flux system the app label is source controller um, and I'm looking at a logs here so the dashboard type is logs just to verify that uh, actually there is some output and I was uh, filtering this down to anything that was saying GitOps production infra uh, in a wildcard fashion and this is actually a log query to make this uh, log based metrics I am applying the rate function on this one and I have to provide uh, look back time range as well so if you are applying uh, if, if you are doing functions on, on a stream of uh, metrics you have to uh, set a time range how far to look back uh, for data points um, now the rendering is gone it's because it's not logs anymore that I'm displaying it's actually a time series so I am hovering on this 0 0.07 um, number of logs what does this really mean I think I have to multiply this by 60 seconds so basically it tells me that there are four uh, log entries per minute so this is a per minute uh, metric right now and it's actually correct because every 15 seconds uh, Flux goes out to GitHub and makes a log entry uh, that means 4 entries per, per minute so that's cool I have this um, I have this dashboard I'm gonna save it and I'm gonna call it Flux Source uh, Controller uh, Activity and 
I promised you that uh, we are going to make an alert out of this. So how to make an alert? You go back to the edit panel and in the alerts section, uh, you uh, start creating your alert. You have to name it, you have to put into a folder. I just created this alerts for the folder previously. Um, this is the query. This is the one that we have made. And there is a condition that you can set on this query. And uh, I'm setting a classic condition when the last entry of the a query is above three then make an alert maybe i'm not doing last but i'm doing average just to smooth out irregularities and because my numbers were very low so for example uh, 0 0.04 uh, if i run the query i will get this nice view uh, so this is the the query result and this is my alerting threshold if I place this to 0 0.6 uh, and run the query again, uh, or maybe 0 0.9, then you can see that the red line is above the green line, so there will be no alert this case. Now, just to make this video useful, like um, what uh, threshold would be meaningful to make here uh, with Flux and GitOps, I think what I want to be notified about if there are not four um, polls uh, in a single minute. So I'm actually, uh, it's, I'm not setting an is above condition, I'm setting an is below condition and I'm setting it to zero, zero, uh, 002. So basically if Flux's activity drops below this line, I will get an alert. I run the query, everything is fine. Um, I can preview the alert. It's in normal state just to just to make this uh, in a different state. How about I preview, pre preview now? It tells me that right now with these thresholds, it's alerting, so that's actually behaving correctly. Uh, I am previewing it again. It's in normal state and cool. So basically this is my alert. I save it and exit from here. And uh, actually this was it. Uh, maybe I navigate back to the alerting rules section where you can also uh, look at your current alerts and you can define uh, notification settings and policies and so forth you can set the contact points and you can set policies and you can even silence alerts so grafana's alerting uh, has come a long way and i think since version 8 uh, the alerting experience is brand new and uh, i recommend you to take a look uh, here so cool in this video so far uh, we first covered how to do basic queries um, then I showed you how to apply functions like the rate function on on the query volume and we have uh, created an alert as well so that was that if you liked the video I recommend to hop over to bookkin.io as well to maybe read about uh, the, the Loki um, section and maybe share it with your team and if you liked it then uh, I hope you will stick around next time too so thank you